They go for Cleal. Driving more, it's so difficult to stop. Italy have shown that they've been able to put up a certain amount of fight up front, but they might not be able to stop this. Indeed, they can't. The try is scored, and who's at the bottom of it? It's Vicky Fleetwood. Bonjour les fans de rugby. Bienvenue dans un autre épisode, Le Women's Rugby Show. What are you Je doing? Suis... Well, we're here to see England play another Quilter Autumn International. Yeah. Right, well, two weeks ago they played France and they won. So? Well, last week they played France and they won. Mm -hmm. So I'm just assuming that we're here to see them play France again and win. So what I'm doing is I'm catering to our French fans. Bonjour. But they're playing Italy today, hon. Idiota. Okay, don't worry, I've got this. <clears throat> Buongiorno, appassionati de rugby. Okay, Adam, I'm going to take it from here, hon. Hello and welcome to the Women's Rugby Show and a bonus episode. Now, you're used to us covering the Tyrrells Premier 15s, but today we follow the Red Roses all the way to Goddington Road in Bedford to see if they can make it three out of three in the autumn test. Now, before we go any further, please give this a massive thumbs up, even with Adam's dodgy languages. Follow us across all social media and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, let's do this. Okay, can I trust you to stop being an idiot now? Uh, not necessarily. Okay, well you better start getting your brain into gear because we've got to drop some hard knowledge on these two teams. Now, if there's anything that we know about the women's England team, it's that they love playing games at this time of the year. The last time they lost an Autumn International was way back in November 2016, and that was missing out to the number ones, New Zealand, by one try. Since then, they played in nine matches, won nine matches, and they've collected a total points of 394 and only conceding 106. Wow. So. Contrasting to that, if you look at Italy's form in this year alone, they've had some really impressive results. If we go back to the 2019 Women's Six Nations, they beat Scotland, they beat Ireland, they beat world number three France. So they can definitely put in a performance. However, they got absolutely annihilated by England 55-0 and they've had a couple of draws this year as well. 3-3 against Wales in the Six Nations and last week they drew 17-0 against Japan. So the question is, which Italy will turn up today. Now, I really want to say something insightful and analytical here about who we should be watching out for in this game, but I'm just going to go with the obvious, the world-class player that is Emily Scarrett. I mean, 22 points in the last two games, 70 points for England alone this year, and that's not even bringing into her performances for Loughborough Lightning. So without a doubt, she is getting those points. And even when she's not scoring, she's instrumental to the Red Roses attack. Just like when she set up Lydia Thompson's last minute try against France to win it. It's fair to say, Scarrett wins games. Absolutely. Well, if we look at the Italians, obviously for those of you that follow us regularly, we mostly cover Tyrrell Premier 15's games. So we cannot miss out the one player who is making such a big impact this season week in week out on these shores it is of course giada franco the player who has been making waves since she joined harlequins women in the summer but she's been good for her country as well she scored a number of tries especially in the women's six nations and she has been tearing it up she is a ball of energy she's like a steel trap out of the back of the scrum and she will tackle anything that moves. But we would be remiss if we didn't highlight some of the other players in blue that England have to look out for. Sophia Stefan is a player who scored two tries last week in their draw against Japan. So we know she is a lethal and natural finisher, but today she's playing at nine. So it may be a little bit unfamiliar to her, to her preferred position, but definitely look out for her speed and quickness and mobility around the breakdown. And of course, we have to look at Michaela Solari, the ball handling linchpin at 13, who will be expected to kick her side into victory today. England's record against their opponents is, shall we say, favourable. Since 2016, they played them five times, won five times, all by bonus points, getting a total of 215 points. So the theme seems to be here, 
play the Italians, get a win. Yeah, absolutely. So if we look at recent history, you've just done that. If we go back even further, it's fair to say Italy are underdogs whenever they play England. They've played 13 times in recent memory. I'm trying to think of a time that Italy have won. But my job is to find a way that Italy can beat the Red Roses, as difficult as that is. The thing about Italy is that they can be a thorn in any team's side. Look at what happened when they played France in the Six Nations earlier this year. They beat them and they beat them by a lot. So what can they do to beat England today? So we've seen that England start slowly. We've seen that in the Super Series in the summer and we saw it in the last couple of games against France. We know that Italy have a really quick defence. They get up fast, they get in their opponents' faces and they do like to vary their attack. So if England do start slowly and Italy utilise this infamous sloping pitch here at Bedford, well, who knows? There could be all kinds of upsets on the card. Okay, so Amy, this might seem like a ridiculous question, but do Italy have any chance of beating the Red Roses today? I mean, have you seen the Red Roses team? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hannah Bottomen, Marley Packer, Emily Scarra. I mean, the list goes on. We're stronger in the scrum. We're faster on our legs. In a word, no. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, let's go see how these two teams line up then. After back-to-back -back wins against one of the best sides in the world, Simon Middleton looks keen to give other players a chance in the white shirt, with some players forcing his hand by being injured. There are six new faces in this Red Roses team, starting with Shauna Brown and Poppy Cleal in the tight five, replacing Sarah Byrne and Abby Scott, respectively. At the back of the pack, Marley Packer switches from seven to six to allow her Saracens teammate, Vicky Fleetwood, into the team. Mo Hunt returns at scrum half for what will be her 50th cap, and Zoe Harrison moves from inside centre. Taking her place is Emily Scott. Finally, Wasps ladies Claudia McDonald takes the place of last week's match winner Lydia Thompson on the wing. Although worthy of note is Captain Sarah Hunter's 119th appearance for her country. Astounding. It's lucky seven for Italy head coach Andrea Di Gian Domenico as he's decided that his side needs a shake-up following last week's draw with Japan. That shake-up starts at hooker, the first of seven changes, where one of the previous try scorers from last week, Lucia Camerano, is replaced by Melissa Batoni. Valeria Fadigi starts at lock with last week's captain, flanker Ilaria Araghetti, out and Isabella Locatelli taking her place. The loss of Araghetti alongside their team captain Manuela Fulan is a double blow for the away team. There's more upheaval out the backs. We already mentioned Sofia Stefan moving from 11 to 9. Well, she has a new 10 outside her in Mikol Cavani. Camilla Sarasso takes Stefan's place and Sarah Baratin completes the starting 15. They go for Cleal. Driving more, it's so difficult to stop Italy have shown that they've been able to put up a certain amount of fight up front, but they might not be able to stop this. Indeed they can't. The try is scored, and who's at the bottom of it? It's Vicky Fleetwood. Hunt has bottom and running around the corner. So difficult to stop, but Italy do just get the bodies there in time. Hunt looks one way, goes the other. They've still got this penalty advantage. There's another penalty for offside, plenty coming in this area. Oh, and the referee says it's a try. Turn it over, but just lost the fight. Hunt, they look to come back to this side again. There's an offside being played. Abby down to try and finish in the corner. That is the try. Uh, another advantage being played. Hunter lays it back for her scrum half. Now it's Harrison. Now the players try and shoot forward. Oh, what a line from Emily Scarlett. The ball, yes. Yeah, yeah, fair, a fair call then. But yeah, I missed that, it was so quick. Oh, well, England looked for that move that we saw Shauna Brown part of earlier. It's going to come off this time for Sarah Byrne. She is so powerful. You just don't know how to... So I'm here with Natasha Hunt. 
celebrating your 50th cap. Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Um, so first of all, I think before the match even started, it was your 50th. When did you find out you were going to be leading the team out today? Oh, so it's kind of something we do in England. Like when you get to that um, 50th cap or 100th cap, like you get to run out first. So I kind of knew in the build up, it got confirmed by Sunt, um, Sarah Hunter. I think it was uh, Thursday or Friday she said it and I was like oh is it definitely happening and she was like yeah of course so yeah I knew I had a little bit of time to process because I'm a bit emotional so yeah. <laughs> I know that probably you'll say no but did today feel any different to any other game? <laughs> yeah. No it did it did um, I was like inundated with messages of like support and like just the amount of people that have messaged or like tweeted something or put it on Instagram like honestly it was so special and um, like so much thanks to everyone I feel so loved and I'll definitely get back to everyone and then like walking out first like I said to Sunt when I was at the front of the um, anthem I was like this is a real lonely place because normally you're surrounded by people um, but no it was awesome <laughs> no it was awesome like I love the girls to bits and um, it's just such a special squad to be part of there's so much competition throughout the whole side even the players that aren't involved today how difficult is it going to be for Simon to pick his star 15 when the Six Nations comes around? Yeah, I think it will be tough. Um, I think all we can do is focus on staying injury free, staying on the pitch and, and putting our best foot forward every time we go into the Tyrrells Prem. Like, it's a great league now, there's so much competition, you've got so many different internationals competing in it, so some of the Italians playing it today. Obviously you've got like Scottish girls, you've got Welsh players all over the place, so um, it's really tough. Like We just want to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward and it's going to be tough. Like, <laughs> it is going to be tough, but hopefully um, we're, that just drives us. Like, as soon as we've got competition in places your game has to race to stay at the top of your game so yeah we'll see absolutely and how difficult was this italian side to play against the first half didn't look like it was going so well obviously the score <laughs> showed otherwise during half time but after the break you were flying what was the difference the hill <laughs> so, <laughs> the for those that aren't here there's a five foot drop on this hill um so we were playing downhill uh, second half so we we chose to go into it like obviously we had um a little bit of adrenaline coming out first half like you wanted to really make a statement and the Italians are a quality side like um, they've got one of the best drift days out there like they always work super hard for each other and we know that we have to absolutely like batter them first half to try and get anything in the second half so it was always going to be a game of two halves like it's the old cliche but that's how we prep to play a team like the Italians. Brilliant well look, we won't take up too much more of your time it's very wet and very cold uh, you're our player of the match so <laughs> congratulations on your 50th cap Thank well you. done and congratulations again yes, yes, thanks Thank a lot. <laughs> So congratulations, you're wearing the badge of honour on your eye there, that is absolutely going to be a blinder. Now the first half, you, it started out not as well as the second half, what was the difference in the changing room at half time? Um, well I definitely think the slope going downhill in the second half definitely helped, um, but just in the changing room we just talked about regrouping, going together, sticking to our processes and going again and it really pulled off. And now you've all given Simon a massive headache for the picking process for the Six Nations. But you've been in all of them. So what do you think you've done in these three last international matches to make it to the Six Nations? Um, I just hope I'm sure about like, dominance in like the games and stuff. Um, I think I've done the line out well. Um, but I, I don't know. You never really know through it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to go forward into the Six Nations. We've got a few more games before Christmas, so they'll obviously be looking at those as well. So hopefully get a shot then. And how big a headache is it going to be for Simon, do you think? Because these last three games have just been absolutely phenomenal. Three out of three. Like, Tell us how, for personally for you, because you've played in all of them, how it's been. Yeah, it's been really good. Uh, Wayne France was amazing. Like The atmosphere was so great there. And then back here on Summer Hall, we know played at Bedford. So, yeah, it's really good to come here and travel around the country playing our games. So it's really enjoyable. Well, we'll go and let you put some ice on that eye. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but thank you so much, Zoe. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. So, Adam, was my prediction right or wrong? Hmm? Uh, it was spot on. <laughs> Congratulations. So, Italy, I would have thought starting off getting the three points in that early, you think that that might have given them a little bit of confidence, but it absolutely did not. Where do you think it went wrong for them? Um, well, look, the, the conditions don't help. I know it's, it's the same for both sides. Um, I think once they had that, you know, um, their injury quite early on, I think that probably took the wind out of them. The thing is with Italy is that if your line speed is that quick, you're at risk of giving away quite a lot of penalties. And I think that just slowed their momentum down and it allowed England to reset themselves 
and uh, they really utilised that, especially in the second half. They did give away a lot of penalties during the game, didn't they? And they had a lot of offsides as well, didn't they? Yeah, a lot of offsides, um, mostly from just because their line speed was so quick. Um, but I mean, you know, especially the team, the quality of, of England. You can't take your foot off the gas. You can't take your eye off the ball. I mean, there's a lot of cliches, but England are so good at strang really strangling the life out of the game sometimes. Sometimes you just have to get a crash ball and, and use the forwards, and it gave them a couple of opportunities then to get the ball out to the backs. But then flipping that coin, it all worked out in the favour for England. So we can't argue with that, can we? Exactly, and it's three out of three for the uh, Quill to Autumn Internationals and well done to England, well done to Simon and the whole squad. It's been a really enjoyable series. Yeah. I think England have been tested, but um, I think today was probably a good result for them. It builds that confidence going into the new year and to the Six Nations. <laughs> so folks, that's the end of this bonus episode. Thank you so much for watching from Amy and myself. Uh, of course, by now you know what to do. Like this video, give it the thumbs up. <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us across social media and tell everyone you know about the Women's Rugby Show. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.